Hey, this is Justin with DayTradeTheMarkets.com doing this video about 10.35 Eastern on um, Thursday, May 11th. And it had a pretty interesting sell-off from this morning, but I wanted to talk, I wanted to share an experience that I had this morning and then talk about it from what I think will be a helpful perspective of, of you know, are, are you judging yourself based on hindsight um, or are you being realistic about the, the challenges of trading in real time? And kind of run you through an example of that. You know, you look at a chart like this today and you can just see, you know, right off the basically five minutes into the open, the market sells off 10 points, right? And it's easy to say, oh, I, I should have caught that or why didn't I catch that or why didn't I catch all of that or whatever the case may be. But in real time, when you're making trading decisions with real money on the line, it's not as easy as, as it seems. And uh, I just think that so many times we judge ourselves on, on the absolute perfect after the fact maneuver where that's not realistic and you have to have a more um, accurate way of judging yourself. So for example, let me tell you about a, a trade I made. Um, I got short right in there, not a huge position, relatively small position, and I got out right in right about there, okay? So if you look at it, I, I locked in, uh, you know, three points, a little over three points right in there. But gosh, if you know, in hindsight, I should have had all of that, right? Well, let me tell you why I made the decision that I did. And let me tell you why I'm okay with it, even though part of me was frustrated when it kept running. So first of all, what the way that I like to look at the market and the way I teach looking at the market is we want to balance the, the stories of the big picture and the big picture levels with the, the story of today. Now today what we see is a lot of selling aggression. Here's a strong selling aggression bar, then an extreme one, more strong selling aggression. Here's a high velocity move to the sell side, another extreme selling bar, strong selling bar, and here we actually start to see some buying where the other side starts to come in play. So in an ideal world, I would get short right there and get out right there. Okay, and if if um, and I actually just talked to someone who did exactly that, they got short right there and, and got out right there, and they just followed the the aggression bars all the way down. Let me tell you the decision I the decision I made and why it wasn't that easy. So I start with the idea of what's our bigger picture bias, and we have a, a, a tool that we call the Daily Market Assistant that you can uh, that you can click on. Let me let me show you how that works. Um, we have the uh, let me bring this over one second here. Um, we have the calendar here. Um, and you know we just go down to the day yesterday was the 10th and then we scroll down here and on the big you know on the ES we do this some several markets on the ES the big picture bias was up here are some scenarios that it would change and then we really wanted to just focus right here uh, you know the first step that we wanted to monitor was this overlay from 91.50 to 96 okay and below that would be the 87 level okay and so if you look at that what I did is I drew this containment area from 91.50 right here to uh, 96 and what that means is you know if we would kind of expect the market to be contained in that area but if it can break lower that's a relatively bearish you know indication if it could break higher that's a relatively bullish indication now all things equal with the big picture bias being down or excuse me being up we'd rather see it it's easier decision if it breaks higher okay in this case it broke lower so from a big picture standpoint, if I'm thinking about getting short somewhere in here, what does that mean? Well, you know, the big picture bias is up, so that is, you know, not great for a short, okay? However, the big picture level, you know, containment, if you will, um, you know, is breaking lower, okay? That is good for a short. So a little bit of a mixed bag there. Not an easy call. I'd rather have everything lining up perfectly. Now, if we look at it on a day basis, we're starting to see as not only are we breaking below this containment, but we're doing it with really good selling aggression. And here, here was a strong selling aggression bar, then and there's an extreme one. So if we look at it from that level, on the day level, um, you know, equals strong and extreme selling aggression, whoops, that is, you know, good for a trade. So in my opinion, there were more good things for a short than there were bad. And there's a different way we can score that as well. But ultimately, it wasn't a slam dunk. It wasn't perfect. Not everything was in alignment. But I felt like there was enough good here to offset the bad there. Okay, so I felt like it was worth going for. Now, I was going to be nimble when I got in right there off that extreme selling aggression. I was going to be nimble. My stop was just a little bit over that. Okay, and if it would have turned around quickly, I would have been out, and that's that. So then, okay, it works out, and it's working out fine. So what? You know, then I decided to get out right here. And why did I get out right there? Well, I did it because I expected some support. I kn not knew, but I assumed there would either be support right there at the on the high of the support zone or right here on the low. Now, as it turns out, the support didn't come in till the low. 
So I guess I was a little bit wrong on that, and I could say, oh, what a fool, how stupid am I? Or I could just say, you know what, it wasn't a perfect trade, so therefore I'm looking for the, the first reason to get out that I can find, and that's hitting this uh, support zone right there. Okay. Now, another trader that I talked to this morning, you know, he got in here and he just said, I'm following the aggression bars until I see something that changes. And it wasn't until right there that he changed. In hindsight, of course, this was the perfect move. Get out right there. I decided to get out right there. You know, in hindsight, again, in hindsight, that looks stupid. But in reality, that's the decision I made and I can live with that. And that's what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is, uh, you, you know, you have, you have to make in real time the decision is a lot harder than it is in in hindsight of course we all know that but i think we tend and we, we hear people talk about these perfect trades all the time we we have to judge ourselves based on what's going on in real time and trying to make the best decision you can and then living with it another possible decision and of course you know someone could say well i got long right there and i got two, you know two points out of it great that's not a trade i would want to take another you know person could say well you should have gotten short here again I didn't do that, and I may end up looking silly. It looks like I probably made the right decision, but if it would have just kept going hard, I would have looked silly on that one to myself because um, you know, I decided not to get short right in there, even though there's some decent evidence for doing that because I have found that over time, it's relatively rare that a market can break from one of these big picture levels, make it to another one, and break through. So it doesn't usually get through two of them in the same day. Of course, it happens, but it takes an extreme amount of buying or selling for that to happen. So I wasn't real comfortable with it breaking out of the second area of containment here. I didn't expect that to really have much follow through, so I didn't get on board there. Now that one, obviously, I'm looking a little bit smarter because I didn't do that, but it very easily could have you know, just taken off down there and I could and I could have easily said, oh, why didn't I do that? I'm, I'm such a fool. But I, I guess the point I'm trying to make, I hope this is coming across, is that you can't judge yourself on the perfect trade. You can't judge yourself on the hindsight trade. You have to look at a market with uh, specific pieces of evidence the way that you look at it, you know, I teach a way that I think is very effective, but the way that you look at it, you come up with the pros and the cons, you decide if a trade is worth, you know, if the opportunity is good enough to take X amount of risk, and if it is, you go with it, and then you try to man make a decision based on, again, that that kind of uh, information, and so I, in, in, I guess in hindsight, made the wrong decision to get out there instead of there, but I can live with that. I, I made a decision based on evidence. It wasn't based on fear. It wasn't based on gut. It was simply based on the, uh, you know, what I decided to do. So I hope that makes sense. Um, if not, let me know, and I will uh, try to clarify that further. Thanks a lot.